What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about color correction tools and how to use them with the video scopes to get the most accurate color correction that you want to get. Now let's get started. Now, if you enjoy watching these videos and you want to see more like it, please subscribe to the channel because I'm constantly creating new content. And so right away, I've opened up my video scopes, which if you don't see them, you can go up to window, come down where it says Lumetri scopes, click on that. They should appear. And in my previous video directly before this, I went over how to read them and make sure to get the information correctly. So I suggest watching that also in addition to this video to have a better understanding of the scopes. And I'll also put a link up top. So now the next thing I wanna do, I have two different clips down here that have different color problems. I have that one and then this. So clearly there's a couple things we need to adjust. Let me start here with this first one. Let's head up here to the top where we have all the different layouts placed. And right now we're in the editing workspace, which you can tell because it's highlighted blue. Click the color workspace. And you're seeing it's adjust the layout a little bit. It's gonna place the Lumetri color tab down here. And they've kind of placed them in a certain order. The first section here is basic correction, creative curves, color wheels and match, HLS secondary and vignette. It's kind of put in this order specifically. Start here with the basic correction and then work your way down depending on the needs and how specific you need to get. Another thing I wanna make sure to focus on is we have this clip highlighted here in the timeline. That's the one I'm wanting to adjust. And you'll see here on the top, it's highlighted blue. That's representing just the section that's in the timeline. So any adjustments I make color correction wise, it's gonna adjust only the portion that's in the timeline. If you wanna affect the master clip, say you have a 20 minute interview that you just pulled this small section out of, you would then switch over here, click to the left where it says master, and that'll affect the entire clip, not just the section you have in the timeline. I'm gonna go back to the other one in the section in the timeline. And then I'm gonna go back here to my source panel and I'm gonna bring up the scopes again. So these scopes are good reference to find out where your video is lacking and it gives you a guide to where to correct. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna click on the basic correction tab and we're just gonna stick in this section for this video. I'll explore the other sections in future videos. So when it comes to my workflow, the first thing I like to work on is the luma range. The, the highlights, the darks, the blacks, the whites, the mid range, and that represents all the tones. So right here where it says tone and down, that's the basic thing I'll work with at the beginning. And that also represents here the luma waveform. So like I said in my previous video, zero represents a true black, 100 represents a true white, and then everything in the middle is the grayscales, the highlights, the shadows, the contrast, and so on. So if you look at my image that I have, it's kind of dark and muddy, so let's work on the brightness. So let's start with the white. I always start with the white and black first to get the white to be as true white and get the black to be a true black. So let's raise this up a little bit. And if you watch the waveform, you'll see the white starting to hit 100 right here. And those pure whites represent the tents here. And if you see the, the scope here, the blacks are pretty close to the bottom, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So once I've adjusted the white and the black, I'll head up to the exposure, and I'll get an overall exposure. Now, if you watch the scope, you'll see it raise a lot of it, but it's approaching the top, so we don't wanna smash it too much. The shadows are still very dark, so I'm gonna come down to the shadows. Let's raise the shadows. Now you notice in the vector scope, this is blending a little bit more, but it's still very, very highlight heavy. So I'm gonna come over to the highlights. I'm gonna drop it down a little bit so it has a better blend. And the contrast, when you move it right, you see the whites, the highlights, and then the shadows and the darks, they're separating, which adds more contrast. But we actually want it to be opposite. We wanna bring it together a little bit more so it's not as much contrast for this shot. And then once you kind of play with those, you can always go back and readjust the overall exposure. And the same thing, now I'm noticing I pulled it up a little bit. I could drop the blacks a little bit darker to get closer to zero. Of course, it's about what visually looks good to you, but using these scopes as kind of a reference or a guardrail is good to keep the fundamentals there. And especially if you're trying to color match a specific clip, to use these scopes really make a difference as far as being specific. Let's just say I'm happy with the tone and the luma range of this. Let's move down to the color balance, which is RGB parade down here. So this represents the red channel, this represents the green channel, this represents the blue channel. And as you can tell, even by the video, before we did any of that lightning and darking, it had a very heavy blue tone to it. So you see all the tone, the blues are smashed here up on the highlights and the reds are much lower. So you can see it kind of sloop down. So it needs to be warmed up. So we'll come over here and that's this section here, the white balance section. You can see here we have the cools, we have the warms, we have the greens, we have the magentas. If you want to just try like an automatic adjustment, click this eyedrop and try to find something that's supposed to be purely white, which this tent is supposed to be purely white. We'll click on that. And you notice right away it warmed up the image. And you also notice over here with the reds and the highlights, it raised the red and the highlights and it dropped the blue a little bit. Now you can manually come over and adjust a little bit more if you want to have a little more warmth in there, or if you want to do the opposite and you want to bring it back down and make it a little more cool. I think that's good right there. Now the one limitation to this basic correction tab are things like this. When you adjust the warmth, adjust the overall tone. 
And the same thing with like the brightness. When I'll do another video, when you start working in more advanced with the curves with the color correction, you can adjust the blue or the green or the red just in the highlights or just in the midtones or just in the shadows where this is an overall adjustment, which is still fine for basic use. So now that's looking much warmer. And if you look over here, it seems much more balanced. See the shadows with the blue, we could drop a little bit. We could raise the shadows in the red a little bit to make it balance out. So now the next step after I adjust my tonal, which is my, my light, my dark and my, my grayscale, we've already adjusted the color temperature here. I'll then move on to U and saturation, which is this last one here. And the section over here to address that in the basic panel is right here in the bottom. This is the saturation section. So we'll bring it down lower. You'll notice the image obviously loses color and goes more black and white. And here, you'll notice that kind of powdery dust tightens up because there's no color. It's not going towards a red. It's not going towards a blue or a, or a green or a yellow or a magenta. But if we bring it up, you'll see that change. And you'll see this open up here. And like I said, watch that video I had before on how to read these, it'll make a little more sense. But that is the basic order when I correct things. So I'll adjust the luma range, which is the lights and the darks, nothing to do with the color temperature. And then after I feel like I got that highlighted correctly or adjusted, I will then work on the white balance, which is the red, green, and blue to balance out the warmth or the coolness. And then after that, I will do the, the U and the saturation, which is this section there. That's kind of a rough basic adjustment. Let me turn it off and on so you see the difference. And you can see the waveforms, how much they changed to where we've adjusted them. We can even add a little more warmth in there if you want the beaches to have a little more warmth. So now we're gonna to move to the next clip that's gonna show you the kind of opposite problem. So here you can notice everything's very, very flat. So nothing is towards the blacks. Nothing is towards the whites. There's not a true white here and there's also not true black here. Everything is smashed up in the middle along with the color, temperature, everything. Even if you look at the saturation, it's tight because there's no saturation. So let's do the same process on this. So let's focus on the black and the white like I usually start with. So clearly we need to lower the black because we need to get that black to hit zero. So now we're starting to get it to hit zero here. So this black in here is becoming a true black. And let's raise the white. Try to get those flowers to be closer to a true white. We'll raise those up a little bit for now. And then we'll adjust the overall exposure. And that's gonna bring it up higher. So now you notice it's starting to get here on the way to 100. So let's bring this up. So looking a little, a little washed out, but we're gonna keep adjusting. And the contrast we wanna separate quite a bit because we want those levels up closer to the bottom, closer to the top. And then the highlights will bring down a little bit. And then the shadows will bring down. And we'll adjust this a little bit too. Anyway, I hope that helped with the basic color correction tools and how to use them alongside with the scopes. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna see more like it, please subscribe to the channel. That being said, have a great day, later.